mean to predict the future is to create it. To be inspired is great, but to be an inspiration is an honor. A very pleasant morning to everyone present here. It's a fantastic day, right? Yes, definitely. All of us will be curious and excited. It's our pleasure to be the host for today's gathering on behalf of Vaitak Titan, Dr. Rangarajan, Dr. Sarundala Engineering College, Department of MBA has organized this lecture on Recent Development in Technology and Growth in Opportunities. I am Neshi. I am Shobna of MBA Department. It's a great day, one we have been waiting and planning for. Do you all know why we have gathered here? Yes, of course, everyone does. It's a mark of invoke the Almighty at the beginning of this event. Yes, one song can change the moment. One idea can change the world. One step can start a journey. But a prayer can change the impossible. Now we request you all to rise for the prayer. And finally, I would like to give my heartiest happy welcome to our illustrious resource person, Mr. Sandhya Shivakumar Ma'am. Our dynamic principal, the man of success, dedication, devotion, Dr. Professor Sir, and the Department of Education, Master. And to and from other departments, our beloved faculty members, and to my dear future executives and entrepreneurs. Every lamp is not a lamp in wise men's sight. That's the lamp with truth's pure radiance, right? Yella vilakum vilakal, sandral ku poya vilakum, sandral ku poya vilakke vilakum. To make this day a blessed one, I invite our illustrious resource person, our principal sir, head of the department, Dr. Suresh Kumar sir, to kinder the lamp. Once again, welcome you all. Have a good day. Thank you. 
same Guru, I am grateful for your part in this event. Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. May I request our honorable principal, Prof. Dr. E. Kavanagam sir, to felicitate the guest with memento, short, sapling, and token of gratitude and respect. Mr. Sandhya Shilpumamana has graduated in Kamath from the reputed Edraj College for Women, Chennai. She has done a Master of Business Administration from the Indra National Open University. Mr. Sandhya Shilpumamana has started as career in HSL Technologies as a recruitment and training personnel for seven years. She then she, she worked for Vipro Technologies as a senior human resources specialist in for two years. Later, she worked for Ford Automotive India Private Limited as manager HR for two years. Currently, she is working as senior manager and association at Paragon Digital Services Private Limited Chennai. Mr. Sandhya Shrinivasan has rich industry knowledge like vendor management, benefit negotiation, onboarding, screening, and performance management. She was also specialist in team management, recruitment, talent acquisition, and interpersonal skill like employee relation, sourcing, management, training, and performance appraisal. Such an experienced and inspiring person is here with us today to talk on the topic. Distant development in technologies and growth open space. We are waiting for, waiting for your valuable work. This session is going to be very informative and inspiring. Once again, you are welcome to me now. Thank you for your gracious presence. Thank you. That was great. I consider it to be great honor and privilege to welcome our illustrious resource person, Mr. Sandhya Shivakumar Ma'am, on the podium to share the thoughts with us today. Thank you. Thank you. He took me to somewhere else. I would have, you know, like one movie, I would have gone to Andhra now. I would have uh, entered Nellur and then I would have come back to Chennai. So, because you people are ready um, to manage your household, to help your parents in their livelihood and you are going to take up great personal, uh, like responsibility and personality on your shoulders, right? So, you people are ready already. So, you should know what is the world which is awaiting for you outside, right? So, I am just going to create an awareness of once you pass out from this college, once you become, you know, a postgraduate, what is your next step in life, right? So, you all will be having a lot of questions, you will have a lot of aspirations, you will be thinking where I should go, which company I should apply for, how do I apply, how can I crack the interview, right? All going to give you very useful insights and tips for you to, you know, get your first step. You know very well, right? One, um, the first impression is the best impression. So always you have to uh, choose your right path, which is the first step of your career. So if that first step is kept right, then you don't have to look back. It's only going to be a very optimistic uh, future for you. Correct? So how many of you here who are currently pursuing MBA, really aspirant about becoming a career oriented person. This question is not only for girls, I am throwing this question across to everybody who is here. Right? So there are people, there are three kinds of people I can say. People who want to have a kind of double degree just to you know increase the standard of their family in the society, to add your graduation after your name in your marriage invitation 
or there are people who want to really get into career and uh, you know achieve something in your career be a role model to your successors to people who are there in your college one day you will come here and you, you will also address the uh, your uh, you know successors who are going to uh, be a fresh graduate out of this college so th this is a second category of people third category is people who have who doesn't have a clear idea who, why you have done an MBA, why you chose to um, you know do this graduation, what is your next step, whether you want to get married and get settled, whether you want to go abroad and continue your studies, or if I need to start working, what will be uh, you know the minimum um, salary that I will be getting. Correct. So I just want to understand from you know few of you what is your aspiration first of all before I go ahead with the presentation and tell you how to face the society. I want to hear from few of you what what is there in your mind. Today you're sitting here. Are you sitting here because Dr. Suresh Kumar told you to come and sit here, or are you looking for something very informative, or are you just this is one of the day part of your college life? As a, you want to escape from your uh, classroom lecture and you are coming and sitting here, what is that is there in your mind? So I really want to understand that. Anybody who wants to volunteer? See, it's going to be very, uh, you know, interactive session. I, I am not your uh, lecturer here, okay? I, I don't like giving lectures. I like to train people. So when you are in any training, it has to be interactive both ways. Whatever you have in your mind, only if you tell me, I will be able to help you. Right? So give me uh, a brief introduction about all of you. Then I will choose one person who wants to, you know, really talk to me. Right? We'll start with this gentleman. Good morning to all. Myself, uh, R. Ramkumar. And uh, I am preparing MBA for, for uh, getting high salary package and uh, my specialization is uh, to uh, get uh, HR and uh, financial money. That's it. Thank you. So by the way, I am also MBA in HR and finance. <coughs> I myself, um, I am. I am not cut away there. Who is that you can take a look This is Parthenon. First MBA. I want to choose uh, operation management. When you choose MBA, which means you are uh, looking at an elevation in your career. Elevation is something outstanding apart from what you don't pass off this value. Right? Not all engineers, lacks of engineers who pass out the career cannot get into the market. Core opportunities are very, very minimal. So that is the reason engineers are also doing MBAs right now, correct? So which means you have chosen the right path. MBA is a kind of course which will which, is a, which will give you life skills, which will be helpful for you throughout your uh, life and career, right? How to manage your society and how to, you know, uh, increase your standard of living and how to fight against the society, right? So that's a kind of a course is what is MBA, right? It is, it is not only something which is apt for people who will do HR or who will do finance or marketing or who wants to start its own business. There is nothing uh, specific about MBA. You, you become an MBA graduate, you learn organizational development, right? which means you know how you develop yourself. Right? So MBA, my simple tip or suggestion here is if you are going to choose specialization, choose combination of two skills which will create an opportunity for your job vacancy for you in two domains. For example, if you are choosing HR and marketing, both are 100% similar. So if you do HR and if you take marketing as a second course, there is not going to be any change. Both you are going to read only the same thing. Because HR needs marketing skills. If you are not a seller, if you do not have marketing skills, you cannot sell your organization to any candidate, to any employee. What is an HR human resource? Human resource is a character in any company 
which interacts with people who are already employees in that organization and with people who are aspiring to get into that company for a job. So they act as a bridge between the company and employee. So if you have to act as a bridge, you should know how to convince. You should know how to convince your employees to retain in the organization. Employee retention is very important. Today, the market after pandemic, I am telling you after pandemic, the market is quite open. There are a lot of n number of job opportunities at Apple. After pandemic, pandemic is not something which is restricted to India, right? It is a worldwide uh, factor which has affected and almost, you know, uh, done a topsy-turvy for the entire world. So all the people who are in other continents, who are in other major uh, countries like US, UK, uh, Europe, they are all looking at India as a hub. So there are a lot of projects which, has, which are coming in. Even from Spain, Germany, France, there are a lot of projects which are coming to India. Number one, because of the cost factor. Obviously, we are our currency is rupees and they all deal with dollars, right? So whatever they pay for an American is almost 200 times more than what they would pay for an Indian in rupee. So that is number one. Number two, because of the skills that Indians have, right? Whatever skills that we possess, how we uh, contribute to the organization, our hardworking skills, sincerity, loyalty, these are all some of the things which they will not find in Western countries. So that is why they are choosing India. So there are a lot of opportunities which are coming from almost all over the globe. So you should know how to choose a specialization which will help you to get into either of the domain. For example, if you are choosing HR and finance, you can set your career path either in HR or in finance. Right? If you are choosing operations management, your complete focus can be into operations. So operations is a place where you meant money. There are a lot of people from the boys where they said that they want to get a high package. High package you can get only if you are into operations. When you choose other divisions like finance, marketing, human resource, you are all support functions. These are all support functions of any company. They are not billable. When I say billable, non-billable, billable are those section of employees for whom salary will be paid in dollars by the client from US or UK or Australia, people will be paying in dollars. For example, if he is becoming an employee of a multinational company, this salary will be paid by the client. So this company is not shedding even a rupee for that employee, right? So obviously his salary is going to be high. But for support functions like human resource, finance, marketing, um, all those uh, sections, we are considered as non-billable. We are supporting the running of the organization, we help the, uh, or the company's engine to run, right? So we are the backbone of the organization, but we are not getting billed by the client. Company is paying from their revenue. So we are considered always as a liability, whereas people in operations are considered as asset. So you all know, most of you have, have done BCOM, you know what is a liability and what is an asset, right? So operations is something where you can mint money. So people who want to get into operations line can definitely, uh, you know, expect a higher package. But I don't tell you for that matter that people who choose HR, finance and marketing will not earn. You will, learn, you will learn, but you will earn less. Learning will be there more, but earning will also be there. But if you are okay to gain knowledge, become a thorough uh, personality, you want to uh, be an old model, set an example for your uh, successors and predecessors, then you can get into HR, finance, there are a lot of learning every day. It is a people management skill. You will speak to almost at least 100 people per day. You will talk to candidates, you will talk to employees, you will talk to your leadership team, you will talk to your top management team, right? So a lot of people will be there for you to interact. So as and when you interact, what will happen? Your confidence level will increase, your communication skill will, uh, you know, you will tune, fine tune yourself, right? And you will also contribute to the upbringing of the company. So today when you join, this company has 1000 employees. 
to these people who are in support function, you continue directly to bring the company to 10,000 employees in one year. That's the target given to HR, that's the target given to all support functions. Operations people are people who deliver the job. Right? These people bring sales, marketing, they all bring the job and operations people deliver the job. So they have the skill set to deliver the job. So please understand these two things when you choose a specialization in MBA. So that is going to really help you because this you may think that if these are the courses offered by Maintech. So I will choose one because my sister did that, because my brother did that, because my mom and dad are asking me to do that. No. Do a thorough industry check. Check out which skills are having high demand in the market. Correct, because uh, everywhere people are looking at MBA graduates when they are when they are speaking about management. We are all part of management, right? So when people are hiring for management, they will only look for MBA people. Uh, so in MBA, what are the fields? For example, when you make engineering. The, the, the hard crop of engineering, I can tell you number one is IT, right? IT or CNC. The second one will be mechanical, right? Third one will be, uh, uh, what do you say, what are the other engineering? Uh, chemical, uh, ECE, yeah, ECE, triple E, they are all hard crops. Chemical engineer, engineering is just picking up because we don't have much of industries here, right? So, and civil, civil also now construction is coming up. So, you, will, you are getting few jobs, but they are civil or chemical or, uh, or instrumental uh, engineering, they are all, you know, like second preference here in India because we don't have much of jobs or much of industries here. That is why people uh, take IB, CSE, triple E, EC, where in all these courses you will, you will also read circuits, you will also learn IT, you will also learn software, all these things will be there. So why do you choose ECE? ECE people can get into software jobs and they can also get into core jobs. That's why you choose ECE, right? So similarly, when you are doing a PG course, please be mindful of what is the course that you are choosing. If you are really career aspirant, I am only addressing people who want to become a career oriented person. Yeah, so if you really are looking for a long term career and want to get into an MNC company, then these are all few things which you have to keep in mind. Okay, so when I, when I graduated in 2003, okay, when I graduated for an MBA student, the starting salary was only 6,000. So I started my internship for 6,000 rupees. Right now, gradually 18 years of my experience, now I have come to some digit salary after 18 years, right? So get the six digit salary, you know what all I have gone to. So there are so many organizations I have been to. The kind of organization I choose is also very important. I will only get into a multinational company, Fortune 500 company, number one, because they have a lot of projects, right? Number two, because they can pay me salary where I can manage my family. Number three, I will have a lot of growth opportunities and learning. So these are the three things which I had in mind when I chose my company. That is why if you see in the start of my career, I started with Excel, then moved to Wipro, then Ford, and now I have joined Paragon. Paragon is a startup company. After 18 years of my service, I can take a risk of joining the startup company. But you people cannot join directly to a startup company. Correct. You have to join an established organization. So whatever uh, uh, Dr. Suresh Kumar is bringing opportunity to you on the table in terms of placement, please make the right decision. I know you people will have restriction. You can attend only one interview. If you get an offer, you cannot sit for next interview. Those kind of things will be there. So please be very mindful. Just for the sake of getting an appointment letter or offer letter in hand, please do not attend any uh, kind of uh, placement uh, that is coming to your table, right? Because you may want to show to your parents that I got a job. Maybe for the first six months or one year you want to pay your cell bill, you want to buy an iPhone, you want to buy a Royal Enfield. These may, these may be your you know, aspirations from the childhood. For that you want some money. You cannot ask your parents to buy a Royal Enfield which costs around 2.5 lakhs now, an iPhone. 
you cannot, or your parents cannot afford. So you want to buy that, you get into some job. After one year, what you will do? You will not have any learning. You will be, wherever you started your career, you will still be in the same stage. You will not move to the next stage. So what will happen? Then you will change job. When you do that, that one year, whatever you have worked hard, that will go for a waste. Again, when you join a fresh company, they will take you as a fresher only. Because you are looking for a job after one year. At the start of your career, minimum three years you have to stay with the organization. Three years is a minimum time. Because probation period itself is six months. Any organization, probation period is six months. In the six months, if you work really hard and prove yourself, they will conform you. You will become a conformed employee. So that process itself will take one year. Then one year, you will, this one year you will not be eligible for any performance appraisal. They will not give you increment or height after one year. The next one year you have to prove. You have to be the top most achiever. So when you become an ex uh, outstanding or exceeding uh, personality in your team, then you will be given increment and height. By the time you get your height and everything, it will be three years. So this three years journey, which is going to be there in your first job, it is going to give you a big jump when you go to a second job, your first job to a second job, right? And always there is a difference between a job and a career. A job can be anything. A person who is selling vegetables and fruits, a person who is working in a supermarket, it is also a job because he is earning. But you people should not see it as a job, you should see it as a career, right? Career is very important for people who have done MBA. So if you want to just get a job, you don't have to uh, you know, work so hard in your plus two, get that mark and then get a graduation and now sit in post-graduation course. Not at all necessary. You, would have, you don't even have to do your 12th standard. After 10th standard itself, you get jobs. There are a lot of employment uh, opportunities available. You can start earning from 10th standard. So please be mindful, these are all some of the things which maybe your, uh, in your family itself, your sister or brother, your parents would have not thought about all these things, right? They may not be anybody who will guide them on these grounds. But now you have a very big platform, right? You, you are part of a very big university, educational institute, which is bringing a lot of things to you. So please be very attentive these two years and you learn these skills and impart it inside you, right? You have already learned some basics of accounting, basics of uh, business law, all these things in your graduation, in your UG, when you did BCOM, BBA, BCA, whatever, computers. You, all of you have an Android phone, all of you use Instagram, all of you have Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever, Telegram, everything, right? So you are already computer savvy. In my days, I have to go stand in queue, pay 15 rupees, they were Sifi, Satyam Sifi. The small, small uh, internet cafes will be there. We have to go wait for one hour, wait for one small, you know, mainframe PC which is now outdated and they will just have a browser, internet explorer starting and it will not even load a page. Now it is not like that for people. Everything is there on uh, readily available, right? So make use of it. This is very, very important. Number two is your communication skill. Okay, wow. So friends could have basing it, Tamil could have basing it, Vee could have basing it. That's okay. But basic communication skill, constructing one sentence in English without grammatical error is very, very important to track an interview. Whatever may be the job, even if you want to get into NASA or ISRO, communication skill plays a very major role. So please be mindful of that. Communication, if you are not getting you know, good marks, probably you are only scored 60% or 50%. But your communication skill is extremely good. They will definitely consider you. You don't have to have foreign accent. I am not asking you to talk in US, UK accent. No. Simple sentences without grammatical errors with good pronunciation. Pronunciation is very, very important. English, English language is such a you know, sweet language but each and every word has its own pronunciation. We cannot change the pronunciation. Right? So these are all very few things which as a HR I see in any candidate. 
And I know how HR fraternity is. Everybody will see for these three things. When we, why are we asking you to talk about yourself? Whenever you sit for an interview, we say, please, uh, can you please take me through your profile? Can you please introduce yourself? It is not that I can find about you from the resume. I don't want to hear from you. Why are we asking that question? Because we want to know how you are able to present yourself. If you are not able to talk about yourself, then how will you be able to talk for the company? How will you be able to talk to the client? How can you talk to your team leader or manager? Correct? So you cannot sit and mug up, um, I'm Sandhya, I'm doing my final year MBA in Mail Tech College. These are all certain things which you can mug up. But we will be able to find out whether you are really, uh, you understand what you speak and then talk or you are just mugging up and uh, talking it. Because when I ask another question, you will not be able to spontaneously answer, you will think. So these are all few things which you have to always uh, keep in mind. Please do not think in Tamil and translate in English and talk. Don't do transliteration. Tran transliteration will end up doing a lot of uh, grammatical mistakes. Think in English and talk in English. If I am asking you what is your name, you should not think uh, Sandhya. you should not say that. Right? So if, when you do that, it will end up in a lot of grammatical mistakes because our mother tongue and English are totally different. It will not have the right choice of words. There are a lot of words in our mother tongue where you will not have an equivalent word in English. So don't do that. These are all very, very, you know, you will have a lot of personality development skills and all that which is happening. Your placements and would have conducted all that training. So please uh, be a part of it and learn. And within you, within the friend circle, please talk in English wherever you have opportunities. Watch English movies. Watch a lot of web series which are coming in, uh, you know, Amazon or Netflix. There are a lot of web series which are coming. I am sure you are all watching it. But I know you will go to subtitles, you will go to language and change it to Tamil and uh, you will have subtitle in English and watch. That subtitle is horrible. If you see the subtitle, it, it will not be the right word. Okay. If you, if, you are, if you are watching a movie in Tamil, you can understand what the character, the hero or heroine is talking. But if you see the translation which is there, the subtitle in English, it will have irrelevant words. So don't watch any English movie in Tamil. No. Right? Batman is released, don't go and watch it in Tamil, please. Hey, I am a I am a No. Don't do that. Go and watch an English movie in English, only then you will be able to understand the foreign language, right? There are people coming from US sitting here and learning Tamil. If they are able to do that, we are all, we all learn English from our KG, from LKG. So it is not an unknown language for us. So don't hesitate to talk in English, right? Okay. So now I just have a small presentation. I will just take you through what are the opportunities which are there. So pandemic is very good for India, like I told you. A lot of opportunities are there, but you have to choose the right opportunity. So I will tell you for an MBA graduate, whatever may be your specialization you want to take, there are a lot of divisions where you have uh, growth opportunities, which I will take you through. For getting that job, what are the skills that you have to learn? For example, one gentleman told he wants to get into analytics, but he doesn't know how to take it. Data analytics, take it from me, today data analytics is the hot drop in the Indian market. You do a data analytics course, you do data modeling, data engineering, data science, starting salary is 75,000 for a data analyst. And what you what you pay for that course is only 15,000. And you become a data analyst and you join an organization for 75k pay code. That's, that's the you know most happening skills right now in the market. And especially when you are doing an MBA, data, data, data is very, very important. I know you will have a subject from data also in, in your second year. Right? Data is very important for any organization. If you are getting into marketing or finance or HR or operations, they will ask you to do presentation. They will ask you to give data about what is the what, what all you have done, what all your achievement. What is the revenue? What is the profit? You have to put it in the right data, graph, by chart, table. For that, you, you have to learn basis of data analysis. Right? Then, artificial intelligence. When you say artificial intelligence, 
Nowadays you have RPA, Robotic Process Automation. Everything, whatever you have, you use on a daily basis. Everything has become smart. Smart gadget, smart watch, smart phone. Yeah, even uh, machine learning. Everything is there. Everything is smart. Uh, even cars are coming, driverless cars. You have electric bikes. Everything is becoming very smart. So we should also, you know, cope up and become that smart, right? So I'll just take you through. Are you able to see? Is it clear? You want to switch off the light or something? All companies, you can, you know, ergonomics. Have you all heard about ergonomics? Ergonomics is your posture, how you sit and work. So today everybody who are in IT industry who sit in front of laptop, we are getting back pain, neck pain, all pain. Because we are sitting for 10 hours, 11 hours, sitting on a chair and working on laptop. So that is not the right posture. So that is why organization is coming with lot of, you know, these kind of options where you can uh, sit on, uh, for one hour you can sit on a bean bag, two hours you can sit on a couch. Then you can sit on, a, you know, on the lounge, you can stretch your leg, keep your laptop on your lap and then work. Even at home, when we are working from home for past two years, sometimes we sit in the sofa, we sit on the bed, wherever we have place, we have a table chair, we sit there for some time, a lot of things. So these are all very flexible things because we are also very bothered about your health. Right, so that is the main focus. So what is the future of work trends after pandemic? So pandemic, two years gone, work from home, even you people would have sat at home happily without college, right? All that would have happened. Now it is all back to normal, but it is going to be a hybrid model. I will tell you that in that particular thing. Then what are the technological development we have? What are the growth opportunities? What are the life skills you have to definitely have, right? And the last one is, how do you crack an interview? So these are all the topics that we are going to see today. Next slide. Okay. So I said future of work trends, hybrid model. What is hybrid model? Two days I go to office, three days I work from home. Five days is my office working. 40 hours. 5 into 8 hours, 40 hours. This 40 hours is split into two days I go to office, three days I work from home. So that opportunity is also there, right? And we take people from anywhere in India. It is not that if you are in Chennai, you have to join only an organization in Chennai. No. You can be in Chennai, but you can join an organization in Bombay or Delhi. And you can still work from home. You can connect virtually through Zoom meeting or through Microsoft Teams, Skype. And you attend all meetings. And you can still become a, a crucial team player. Right? And. Uh, like I said, we are concentrating more on employee well-being. So we want you all to have a perfect life balance. Manage your professional life and also personal life. Eight hours, eight hours you concentrate. After eight hours, we don't want you to stretch even one minute. You can easily log out and take care of your personal life. Saturday, Sunday, it's a compulsory off nowadays. That's the trend. So that is why I told you, you have to choose the company. You have to choose the sector. You have to be mindful if you want to have all these uh, opportunities for you. Then increase focus on mental health of employees. So today people get very stressed. There are a lot of people going for counselling, depression. Even at home you would have seen your mom and dad if they are working, they come home, they come in a very serious mood. Like that our mom and mom used to you know, restrict us. That's because of the work culture. Our uh, people who were there in you know, the previous generation, the work culture is very bad. They were still under slavery. Now it is not like that. Nobody can you know, ask questions to anybody. Right? Let's focus on roles, more focus on skills. So you don't mind on what is the role that you are playing. Take the opportunity and learn on the skills on that particular role. So start of your career, you have to be open for learning. Emphasis on soft skills. Soft skills? What is a soft skill? Okay. Speaking. Right? Speaking is nothing but soft skills. So you should know how to speak, how to write an email, 
writing an email, email etiquette is very very important. Uh, Suresh, I think you would, you will have the soft skill trainings, right? Yeah. So I recommend you to have email etiquette. Yeah. Email etiquette is very very important because any organization they get into or they become an owner, they start their own business, email writing is very important. There are a lot of businesses which uh, projects that we have lost because we did not, you know, draft the email properly. The email should have a proper salutation, subject, uh, it should not be like stories, it should be just two, three lines conveying the message clearly, right, setting the expectation, timeline. So email etiquette is very important. So that is one. And uh, your diversity, equ equality and inclusion. So we, today we talk about LGBTQ. Do you people know what is LGBT? Yeah. So today in, in my organization, I have 20% target to take LGBTQ. I already have people in, in that cadre, 20% working in my organization. Out of 100%, 40% male, 40% female and 20% will be LGBTQ. So diversity inclusion is very important. When we say diversity, is, it is not geographical diversity. I, uh, I have a person working in my team from Delhi. I have a person working from my team from Kanyakumari. This is not diversity. Diversity is, we have to look at mankind as one. Everybody is equal. So if you are really choosing HR, diversity inclusion is very important. So please understand what these people are into. This LGBTQ community, they have a lot of skills, they have a lot of skills. skills. You need to, you know, um, promote them, uh, you have to encourage them and also get them to, uh, encourage them to join organization, um, just come out of their society, stop them from begging on signals, doing a lot of illegal, uh, you know, jobs on the roads, all that we can stop and give them job opportunities. So that is very important for a HR. Next, coming to technological development, I told you artificial intelligence, robotic process automation, cloud computing, machine learning. These are very, very important. People who want to do operations management, your operations management is not Excel sheet. It is going to be artificial intelligence. Please do a course on robotic process automation. When I am getting course, don't think that I am asking you to join any uh, NIIT or anything of that sort. It is all online courses. It is available in online. You don't have to pay fees. Just enroll, do that certification, get lot of certifications and keep it ready. Not only a degree is going to give you a job. All these certification, if you do a certification in RPA, it is going to be three months course. And you can choose a daily 4 hours or daily 3 hours or weekend classes. All these things you can choose. Everything is virtual. You don't have to go to any institute and learn. Everything is virtual. Do that and get a certificate and keep it for Then data analytics. Data analytics, you have data science, data modeling, data engineering, Adobe, Google Analytics, right? Tableau and Power BI. Power BI is business <laughs> intelligence. So your business intelligence are all very very important for MBA students, right? So these are all some of the courses in data analytics for you to do it. Then smartphones and other devices. So smartphones, you just have a phone in hand and you can travel anywhere, right? You don't have to carry money, you can use Google Pay, Phone Pay, whatever pay. You don't have to have a card in hand. You don't have to worry about, if you are going for a vacation, you don't have to worry about hotel booking. You just get into Trivago or make my trip do a hotel booking and go there. Everything is there in that small device. Right? So these are all some things which you have to keep equipped. Then smart mobility. Smart mobility is, we are running out of diesel and petrol. You know very soon diesel cars are going to come to a standstill. Already all the major automobile producers have stopped diesel cars, it's going to be petrol cars and petrol cars you know only till, until the time petrol is going to be available in the earth, already we have a scarcity for petrol so it's going to be electrical or battery car or, or maybe people will ask you to use bicycle, right, anything can happen, 
or just a two wheeler where you will go and have instead of petrol stations you will have charging stations you will go and do charge there you will pay for the charge and then you will immediately take and go so that is going to be the next generation for your kids and all that so you have to be very much aware of uh, the smart mobility health care health care also today when you go for any hospitalization everything is available online hospitalization if you want to you know uh, have a look at what is the surgery that is happening inside the operation theater they will give you a cd in that cd if you play and see how the operation happened everything you can see nobody can cheat us so that is also available in healthcare space research elon musk spacex tesla who all wants to go to mars you can enroll with elon musk so these are all you know like lot of uh, developments that has happened in technological side so please be aware of all that and uh, but there are some uh, disadvantages people who are really emotional people who are very traditional who don't want to sit in front of uh, you know uh, cell phone all these people will not like all this for example maybe my father doesn't like all this he feels uh, you know smartphone is a waste of time and money because it is He is in that in that age, seventy plus. He has already completed his life. He is in retirement stage. Maybe he doesn't like a smartphone, but for us, that is our life, that is our career, and that is our earning. That's going to give you salary, right? So that is very important. So some disadvantages are high cost. So all these things which you see in the top, it involves cost. and there is no creativity you don't apply human brain everything is programmed you just have to go with the program then there are lot of chances for increase in unemployment everything will become automated so manpower is not needed previously when you say hr in human resources for each and every team in human resources you have lot of divisions you have talent acquisition which is recruitment you have performance management system who takes care of the employees growth you have hr operations who takes care of salary payroll all that you have uh, then you have hr business partner who will talk to employees for any you know resignations retention all that so for, we used to have minimum 25 to 30 people in hr team in any organization today under me uh, in hr i have only 7 but the number of employees we are meeting is 2500 for 2500 employees only 7 hr is there that's because everything we have automated right so increase in unemployment is also one of the disadvantage and it makes human lazy you sit at home you order in swiggy zomato and food comes to your home you you know to your house so no need for kitchen no need to buy provisions no need to uh, you know stand in the hot sun and cook just you order and it comes to your home so it makes you lazy so that is also one thing and no ethics so machines will not know ethics only humans will know ethics so you don't have opportunity to learn a good behavior bad behavior learn from your experience all that is missing when everything becomes technologically developed right no growth opportunities for mba like you said we have banking and finance bfsi growing big time banking growing big time finance investment banking you have this crypto all these things coming yeah um, bitcoin they are all into investment banking then management consulting you all can become a consultant you can do counseling because you are all good in speaking mba students entrepreneurship lot of people said i want to open my own business run my own business so you you can gain entrepreneurship data analytics data analytics is something which you see you know the next step for you to think about private equity equity funds mutual funds these these are all very you know picking up uh, industry right now in the market then you have digital marketing digital marketing is nothing but advertisement digitally So I come from a digital marketing company. Whenever you open any shopping website, Amazon, you want to order one smartwatch. You go to Amazon. How many ads comes and irritate us? 
even after you know placing an order for that particular product, even after that, after for one week you will get a lot of ads. Daily morning when you you know uh, switch on your mobile phone, at least 10 to 12, 15 ads will come. Continuously you will uh, hear the beep sound. All these ads are created by digital marketing companies. So we are an organization who create those ads. When you go to Google, when you go to Flipkart, when you go to Amazon, Mintra, Misho, whatever, you know, Alibaba, whatever ads comes, that is created by digital marketing companies. So we have people who create those ads, though they write the ads, the contents that come. Every ad will have a tagline, right? All these tagline, everything is created by digital marketing guys. Then human resources. So these are all the growth opportunities you have in MBA, right? Next screen. So I was talking about life skills, interpersonal skills, soft skills, which means ability to interact with people. So please interact, open, come out of your shell. You are no more a kid. You have completed graduation. You are doing a post graduation. So come out and speak. Whatever you speak may be wrong, grammatically may be wrong, but only if you speak, you will be able to learn. So in interpersonal skill, active listening, you listen and then you communicate. Listen and then respond. Leadership skills, very, very important. You see your father. Your father, everywhere in, in all the uh, you know, family, we see father as a, a leader, leader of the family. Because he has that skills. He has the ability to manage each and every member of the family. So that leadership skill is something which you have to embed. Decision making, emotional intelligence. You cannot be emotional and you know sensitive for each and everything. You cannot start crying when your manager is yelling at you. If your manager is yelling, there are only two things. Either the manager should be in that case or whatever you have done is wrong. If the manager is in that case, just ignore him. Don't even consider him as a human being. You continue to do whatever you do. That's my policy. Okay. Number two, if you have done any mistake, you accept it and you try to change it, rectify it. So this is called emotional intelligence. Same will apply to your college also. Your HOD ma'am will shout, you cannot sit and cry. You have to understand why she is shouting because she is very much interested about your personal well-being. That is why the person is shouting at you. So please understand that. Don't become emotional. If you become emotional, you will not apply your brains. Right? Then critical thinking. Thinking can be anything, but critical thinking is very important. Critical thinking is how to find a solution for that problem. The solution will be a long term solution, not a short term solution for a problem. That is critical thinking, problem solving and teamwork. Teamwork is very important guys. You have to be a team player. If you are not a team player, then it is very difficult for you to you know, survive in any organization. So please develop teamwork skills. Then, the last but not the least, how do you crack interviews? Number one, whichever company you are applying for, before sitting for the interview, do research, read about the company. Don't simply come and sit without even knowing who is the CEO of the organization. That's really bad, right? To so research about the company, go through the job description, all the organization is sending JD to your placement officer. Placement officer is putting the JD in the notice board, sending circular to each and every department. Please go through the job description. Find out whatever is there in the job description is suiting you. Is, is it equal to your, uh, you know, aspiration? If it is equal to your aspiration, then apply for the job. Otherwise, don't do that. Brush okay? up basics. Basics you have to brush up. You know, uh, there might be somebody who will just ask how to, how you will find out the version of window. Very, very basic question, no? But most of us will not know. There are a lot of ways to find a version of a window. So when you say basic knowledge in computer, basic knowledge in Excel, Word, PowerPoint, MS Office, these are all some things which you have to pressure. Prepare for the test. You will have aptitude test, written test, oral test, whatever, prepare for the test. Prepare for the potential interview questions. So you would have already uh, attended some interviews or your seniors would have attended some interviews. 
just find out what are the questions they go through and you prepare yourself. Number one, be punctual. Please be on time for any interview. Don't go after the interviewer comes and sits. Right? That's very important. Speak clearly. Whatever you want to convey, you convey it. But don't, you know, for, for one question, don't drag it and talk Ramayana or Mahabharata there. Whatever is expected, give that answer. Speak clearly. Maintain good body language. You have to always sit straight and have eye to eye contact. You cannot, you can cross your legs, you can fold your arms, everything is correct. But then body language, you cannot, you know, be uh, leisurely relax, sit back, um, show your back, all that is not. No good body language. Then um, ask the right questions. There will be a time where the man, the interviewer will ask you, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. So don't you have to ask right questions. Don't ask something very irrelevant. So that that is very important. And also don't repeat whatever the interviewer is saying. So he will think that you don't have active listening. Listening skill is very important. So don't. You know, ask any relevant questions. Know what and when to speak. There will be an opportunity given for you to speak. Only then you have to speak. You cannot interfere and ask questions to the interviewer. Last, rehearse explaining your resume. How do you take you through your resume? Don't buy heart, don't mug up. Please come out of that I am so and so from so and so college, from so and so family. Please don't do that. So try something different. How will you introduce yourself to your friend? How will you introduce yourself to somebody who is, you know, uh, your family uh, member? So you have to think like that and do something innovative. Don't just uh, uh, use the same old technique which your placement officer or placement cell is uh, teaching you. No, think something innovative. How do you take you through your profile? We know that you are uh, you are such and such person from the resume. You don't have to tell myself. And please don't start any sentence with myself. Please. Myself, Sandhya, no. That is a wrong word. There is no word called myself in English. There is no word called can't able to. You cannot have a can't and an able together. Can't is a negative and able is a positive. Can't and able cannot be put together. Everybody will say can't able to. No. I am not able to. Or I can't. That's all. There is no can't able to. Don't do that mistake. You will be rejected, I am telling you. If I am there, I will reject. Definitely. These are very basic questions. People's, children's. People, children and all is already plural. There is no yes after people's and children's. And especially his, her, him. You make a lot of mistake. For a female, you will say his, him. And for a male, you will say her, she. Very, very bad. So these are all very, it is not expected from an MBA graduate, come on. Today even a, you know, 7th standard, 8th standard uh, kids are able to speak wonderful English. Maybe our school foundation or basic is not good. May most of you have studied in a government school or a matriculation school where the teacher would have taken class only in Tamil or in your mother tongue. I know how it happens in rural or, uh, you know, urban middle class uh, places. But there is an opportunity for you to learn now. You have one more year. Please focus on communication. These are all small mistakes which, which you should not do in an interview. Right? So that's it from my end. Any questions for me? I think I have spoken a lot after a very long time because I have chosen not to speak for some time now. I have a team who will handle it. I will only sign. So I don't speak to anybody for some time now, but this is after a long time, I am addressing a gathering. Anything you want to know? Nothing? All clear? Hungry? Want to have lunch?
and you will come to the recommendation. That is for business analytics. For doing business analytics, you don't need any tool. But for doing data analytics, you need a tool. Do you need a technical knowledge? Of course, of course. You have to have a technical knowledge. That's why I told you do a course. Do a course, learn Tableau. Tableau is now the future. Right. You do Tableau. Power BI is not there in all organizations. It is just upcoming thing. So it is there only in selective organizations. But Tableau is very important. All the organizations will have a portal, employee portal. And the employee portal is run behind Tableau. So you, every employee should know how to use that portal. For that you need to know Tableau. Tableau is very important. Of course, I, I, I had friends who have already worked in Niger, 
But the problem is my family is very orthodox. They are very conservative. They will not allow me to work in night shift. But open if you are open to give me a UK shift, I am okay to work in a UK shift. You have to put it in a very positive manner rather than giving a straight no. That that is a straight reject. That's all. Your CV is kept aside and next person is called. So please put it in such a way that you are very flexible, stable. So the person should have a thought in the mind that okay, number one, this candidate is trainable. She knows some basics. He or she knows some basics. So if I take her or take him and train for one month, she is a trainable resource. That is number one. Number two, she is flexible. Right? She can adjust to the changing environment. Number three, she has stability. She can work with the organization at least for a minimum period of two years. So these are all three things which we will see in any category. That's how you put forth your uh, answers. Please devote a lot of time for yourself appraisal. So always do a self-examination, see where you lack. So do some courses to improve that. If you have problem talking in a large crowd, then you, uh, you, uh, you know, participate in a lot of seminars and workshops. Come forward and talk. Address the audience. Join Toastmaster Club. Have you heard about Toastmasters? Okay, go and Google it. There is something called Toastmasters. Toastmaster is a club. It is maintained in each and every area, each and every community will have a Toastmaster. Toastmaster is a club which will help you to come out of your nutshell, come out of your fear of addressing a huge crowd. And it will help you to face the interview, it will you know, uh, mold you to address a large uh, audience, all that they will help you. And it, it is also something where you can earn money. If you become a Toastmaster, in a month you can attend some 4 to 5 such seminars and they will pay you for that, you get a stipend. So it's a very good platform. I have seen a lot of students who have attended Postmasters Club and uh, they have improved their communication with presentation skills. So uh, Google Postmasters and see. You can join one in your area. You have one more year to complete, right? So this one year, during weekends, you attend Postmasters Club. <coughs> you can also find out if there is a, a, a local Postmaster Club and you can invite one. Uh, there will be a president, a secretary, and a vice president for any Toastmaster club, you can invite them. They will come and address the students. They will give some ideas as to how to address the uh, audience and all that. Well, you have said that uh, you are having uh, experience in uh, digital marketing in your work. So can you share uh, what are what are your what your three is by working? See, I, I am from HR, sir. I am from HR. I don't work on digital marketing, but I hire people who knows digital marketing skills. So, what are the skills for digital marketing? Number one, you should know data analytics. Okay. Number two, you should know how to search and how to do social media marketing. Have you heard about SEO, search engine optimization, search engine marketing? When you go to Google and you, and for example, if you go to Google and you search for uh, Rajnikant. So Rajnikant, when you search in Google tab, Superstar should come in the first page. First, uh, you know, the first image which comes should be Superstar. Because for us, Rajnikant means it is Superstar. But there can be n number of Rajnikant. Right. So to bring that Superstar in the first page is something called digital marketing. We do a lot of search, we do a lot of campaigns, we do a lot of programmatic, uh, you know, listings. So you, you open your uh, own company and you want your company, for example, you open a, um, a restaurant. You want your restaurant to be top one of the top 10 restaurants who supply vegetarian food. So when I go and search in Google, top restaurants in Chennai near me, Right? So your, so your restaurant should come in the first page. For that, how do you do campaigns? So these are the companies, digital marketing companies, will do that. They will help you to bring your company to the first page of this thing. 
Google. Uh, they will help Amazon, all the online shopping websites to get more leads. All that. So that is what is done by digital marketing. For that you need some skills. That is data analytics, SEO, SEM, social. All that you need to know. For that you have to do courses. You do basic course, then the organization will teach you what is needed for the operation. But basic knowledge you should have. Anything else?
uh, you know, there are specialized uh, in nowadays in lot of schools and colleges they are bringing very uh, you know eco-friendly furniture. So all those furniture comes under economics. That's not a course. Okay, it's not a course. It is a it's a technique. Yeah. Only if uh, one more thing, important thing, please do not negotiate salary in the interview. Okay? Inter in any interview, you will have three rounds. The final round will be salary negotiation. That HR will do. But interview will not be taken by HR. Interview will be taken by the operations manager. He will be picking up people from his team. He will do technical interview, give feedback, selected or rejected to HR. Then HR will come and discuss salary with you. At that point of time, the HR will first explain how, what is the salary package, what is the basic, what is HR, what will be pay for, what will be the PF deduction, what will you have in hand every month. That she, he or she will explain. Then as a fresher, you don't have any scope to negotiate on salary. Fresher, at the starting time itself, Suresh will tell you this company is uh, providing 6 lakh package. So you will choose whether you want to go to 6 lakh package or 5 lakh package or 3 lakh package and you will choose. But if you choose that as a fresher, you cannot negotiate. But once you have minimum 1 year of experience, then you can negotiate this. No, as a senior manager, the Janet Association, Paragon Digital Services, what is your salary package? Do not ask age and salary to anybody. <laughs> Something really very bad. So I told you I earn in six digits. Can you please explain about the course MHR? Masters of HR Human Resource Management. That is one of the PG course, not like MBA. No, no, no. It is a PG course. MBA. But it's one year. MHRM is a blended course. MHRM is you will do BCOM plus one year of MHRM and you get that degree. Or you can do a, it is just a you know a diploma course kind of thing. You will do a PG diploma in human resource management, PG HRM. And the money is the MHRM. It is not going to have any doing an MBA and doing an MHRM is not advisable. It is not a certification course. Is a degree or a diploma. In other uh, months, guys, next year, if there is an opportunity, if I am here or whichever company, I will definitely come and meet you guys. For a
Uh, definitely, and uh, I was like, Madam told that uh, she will be giving an opportunity to our students also. So wherever she is, definitely she will extend uh, support. In our so, thank you Now we call upon Mr. Vimalgrath of First Gate MB to propose the vote of thanks. I propose the vote of thanks to all the dignitaries who have participated in this event. I would like to thank our Chief Guest, Ms. Sandhya Shokamuni, who honored this function with her inspirational thought and ideas. It was a really eye opening session. We got a clear idea of what we will today. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable time to spend with us today. Your thoughts on technology and growth opportunities enlightened with Asma and have shown as a new path. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable time to spend with us today. It was a really wonderful session, ma'am, and I hope everyone has benefited by this session. Thank you so much, ma'am. Also, I would like to thank our respected principal, Professor Dr. E. Kamnaulan, sir, for all his support and encouragement. Our head of the department, Dr. A. Suresh Kumar, sir, for all his motivation and organizing such valuable program for us. And our below faculty members for their kind support and guidance. And last, I thank my dear friends for their active participation and involvement. Thank you all for making this program a successful one. Have a great day. Thank you so much.